Welcome to History Hunters Report 13, Medieval History's Real Women Artists. 1459, a gifted woman artist, a ruthless Scottish privateer, and an audacious plan that throws them together with dangerous consequences. No one on the Greek island of Rhodes suspects Annika is responsible for her Venetian father's exquisite portraits, least of all her wealthy fiancé. But her father's vision is failing, and with every passing day, it's more difficult to conceal the truth. When their secret is discovered by a powerful knight of the Order of St. John, Annika must act quickly to salvage her father's honor and her own future. Desperate, she enlists the help of a fierce Scottish privateer named Drummond. Together, they craft a daring plan to restore her father's sight. There's only one problem. She never imagined falling in love with her accomplice. Was this history, imagination, or both? What's truth and what's fiction in my novel Sea of Shadows? Everything in the book blurb I just read you is based on history. Women worked as artists at that time, though most of them remained anonymous, for reasons I'll explain later. The Order of St. John of the Knights Hospitaller ruled Rhodes and the surrounding islands for two centuries. Privateers, essentially freelance pirates, helped the knights fight off the Ottoman Turks and the Mamluks of Egypt. And the Arab world, a quick sail from Rhodes, offered advances in science and medicine that made the West's medical system pale in comparison. To celebrate Sea of Shadows, book two in my Sea and Stone Chronicles, I'm publishing a series of reports that zoom in on chapters of history, inspiring aspects of the story. This post takes a look at the astonishing truth about European women artists in the medieval and early modern eras. The women I'm about to describe were the inspiration for Annika Foscolo, Sea of Shadows' bold and talented heroine. Real-life women artists. Evidence of women artists lingers in tax rolls and wills. In 13th and 14th century Paris, women made up about 10 to 15 percent of all taxed individuals. This number included artisans, widows, business owners, any female earning her own taxable income. Illuminators and embroiderers showed up frequently on the tax rolls, as did silk weavers, brocaders, and textile finishers. Women were accepted into many trade guilds of the time, usually via family members, but some trades had free entry and accepted all who met their requirements. Recently, I discovered a woman artist, Agnes van den Bosch, who worked in the Ghent Flanders Artist Guild for over three decades during the 15th century. Her father and brothers were master painters. Agnes painted mostly on cloth. Her only known surviving work is a banner she was commissioned to produce for the city of Ghent. I'll link to a high-resolution image of the banner in the show notes. On the Greek island of Rhodes, where Sea of Shadows takes place, there's evidence of Italian-trained artists who worked for the knights and other wealthy patrons, perhaps feudal lords or merchants. I also found examples of knights commissioning Byzantine-style icons of saints. My heroine, Annika Foscolo, the daughter of a Venetian artist father and a Greek mother, does not have the status Agnes van den Bosch enjoyed as a member of a guild. The true nature of her talent is a secret to all but her immediate family. This seems to have been typical for women artists of the time who worked in the family business. Their work was generally not valued and kept anonymous or attributed to their male relatives. My first historical fiction books, the Miramond series, told the story of a Renaissance-era female artist and the modern-day scholar on her trail. My heroine, Mira, was modeled after real artist Katerina Van Hemmesen, who worked as a portrait artist in Flanders during the early 16th century. Her self-portrait at the easel is the earliest known such work by a woman artist in Europe. The Latin inscription is unusual for the time, especially for a female artist. The translation is, I, Katerina of the Hemmesens, painted me in 1548 at the age of 20. 
and I link to a more in-depth discussion of the portrait. All the research I did for The Girl from Oto and the other books in the Miramon series led me to Annika Foscolo. I learned that for every example remaining to us of women like Katerina Van Hemmesen, many others have been lost to history forever. Or were they? One story that gives me chills is that of Judith Lester, a Dutch Golden Age painter born in 1609, whose work was largely attributed to Franz Hals and to her husband until the 1890s. Ironically, she is not considered a great Golden Age artist, not compared to Hals or Rembrandt or Vermeer. And yet, many of her works were believed great enough to pass as Hall's originals for centuries. Do you know why the Do you know why the art world changed its mind about those Hall's originals? Because someone noticed Judith Lester's monograph on one of the artworks at an auction in 1892. I predict that Judith Lester is not the last female old master to be rediscovered. More are waiting for us to dig a little deeper into history and uncover their secrets. And I can't wait. In the meantime, I'll create their imagined counterparts, confident that what I'm writing is based on real women who lived, worked, and loved hundreds of years ago. Thank you for listening to this History Hunters Report.